Is there any topics that's uh, closest to you that you look most forward to? In the healthcare landscape, there is two things. One is the bullying and the hierarchy of healthcare here, where there's the houseman, there's the medical officer, then registrar, specialist, consultant. There's just too much, too many levels, and there's always this wall you have to climb over to talk to people to your superiors. So, one of the things I I would really envision for healthcare here in Malaysia is that we break down all these walls. Because I'll just give you an example. In the public healthcare, we have, I don't know, multiple rounds, maybe a million rounds a day. So first the houseman comes very early to do a round, see all the patients. Then the medical officer comes and does the rounds, the same rounds again with the houseman. And then Later on, the specialist will come and do the same rounds. They'll ask the same questions or maybe additional questions. And then the fourth round, the consultant will come and do their rounds with all of this, the houseman MO specialist as well. I see this very redundant. There's no reason for all this hierarchy. Like you have to do the job before I come. Why can't we go as a team and see? So that's one thing. Secondly, <clears throat> doctors always try to do things by themselves. I, I don't blame them because I think we've been trained in medical school and even in the hospital training that you have to do everything. You can only rely on yourself. But that's not true in the real world. You want to get something done, you definitely need people around. You need a good team. You need a community. So I guess I just want to let the doctors know that it's okay that you don't know everything. You can always ask for help. And that's why we have this summit where we have a collection of people in the room. It's a safe place where you can actually explore your options, find out what else is there for you. And uh, you can always ask for help from us. It's always uh, nice if you find your tribe and get some support uh, with the challenges that you're facing. And it's uh, comforting in a way to find other people that have similar or the same challenges. And one thing that I'm wondering, you mentioned before that you are going to have speakers that went out of the clinical practice and went back in to the clinical practice. You, We also talked earlier about how difficult it is to leave clinical practice to do something else because it's just so embedded in the mindset that if you're a doctor, you're a doctor. So do you see any shifts in this? Is it getting easier? Is the whole thinking changing with uh, all the, the activities that you're also organizing? How do doctors go back to clinical practice without feeling bad that they left in the first place? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I think first is uh, being at peace with the decision you make because everyone's going to tell you that you betrayed your profession, grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunties, like cousins, everyone will try to make you feel bad for leaving. Sometimes you just have to leave. The option that there is right now, uh, a lot of housemen or interns, they leave and then they take a gap year and then they come back in again. Some of them will find out that, hey, the second time I'm in a better place or right department, group of people, and they help me through. But there's also those that come back the second time and realize that, okay, I'm ready to close this book. We see that a lot with the housemen these days. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. We, we need to be less rigid about how things should be because things are always evolving. We mentioned before that you were in the clinical practice for over 10 years and also talked about the healthcare rigidity, how difficult it is to, to, to make change, to make transformation because of the hierarchy and the structure that's um, in existence uh, at the moment. What kind of changes did you observe during your clinical practice? Because progress is happening Implementation of digital healthcare is, is there, is just very slow. So I've worked in three different government hospitals. So the first one I was there and I saw when I joined, they just started implementing the digital, digitalization of the healthcare system, the EMR. It was still very rudimentary. And then I moved to another hospital and I saw that this hospital was even better. They fully digitalized their hospital. And I can see the benefits of that. So I guess that's what's um, slowly coming. But what actually needs to happen is with this digitalization of the healthcare practices, 
we actually need the hospital administrators, the scientists, the developers, they actually need to involve stakeholders in their discussion. So by that, like when they come up with all the solution, healthcare solutions, the app, whatever it is, they need input from end users, which are the doctors and the nurses.